One of the cars scorched in last Friday's wildfire in the Cajon Pass was a classic worth about $100,000. Purchased by a man in Torrance, he was planning to restore it. Vintage Jaguar on its way to a new owner. Retired fighter jet mechanic Malcolm Croxton's recent $50,000 purchase was sitting on a car carrier. He says he was actually watching this thing burn on our air on Channel 4. Oh Yeah, my name is Malcolm, Malcolm Croxton. I'm the guy who owned the Jag that got burned in the Cajon Pass fire. My buddy Mitch called me in the evening while I was waiting for the car to arrive. I saw this car on the news burning up on the freeway the night that he was expecting it, and I knew it was his car, so I called him and said, Mal, he's got bad news. And he said, hey Mal, are you watching the TV? And I said, no, I'm, I'm waiting for my Jag. And he said, well, there's a Jag burning on a car carrier in the Cajon Pass. Said, oh my gosh, I watched that on the news and didn't realize that there was an E-type in the fire, but it was Malcolm's. I went into shock. I mean, things like that don't happen to me. And what are the odds of a car carrier carrying my car being tracked in a wildfire? I should have gone out and bought lottery tickets. I bought the car for 50,000 cash in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and everything was going well. I mean, the guy, uh, Got it put onto a car carrier, told me it was on its way. Flames caught a Range Rover on top of the car carrier's cab. The only reason my one survived was it was the last car on the lower deck and it hadn't had gas for 25 years. I didn't know whether I could do it, but then my two friends, Mitch and Lewis, offered to help me. I met Mal probably 15 years ago. I've been buying and selling and fixing things uh, for a long time. My name is Lewis Ham. Been a friend of Malcolm's for 15 or 20 years. Restored a motorcycle I needed some parts for, and he had an ad in the paper. I responded to his ad. He sold me some parts. We've been friends ever since. I've known them for 25, 30 years, so they're pretty experienced. Just guys that grew up in the days when you had to know about the cars. You know, we used to bump start them and stuff like that. You just had to know what you were doing. It may take him a year of work, but Malcolm is keeping his bad luck in perspective, and most grateful no one was hurt in that massive blaze. You know, it's just an act of God, I suppose, and can't get angry about it. When I first saw it, I thought, boy, it's not as bad as it could have been. Certainly the car is, is badly damaged, but there's always the possibility to bring it back. Now I've got to rewire it. The engine's frozen. It's got huge dents in it, trunk prized up by the fire department, all the wiring, you know, just everything. I think the process to get this car back on the road would be to uh, take apart the various major components and overhaul them as they need. The Jaguar is a complicated machine, but we will be able to get this thing mechanically put back together. We'll be cleaning a lot of parts, repainting a lot of parts, repairing a lot of parts, and perhaps bringing a lot of parts to various, you know, to body shops, chrome shops. I think the fact that an E-Jag is a recognizable vehicle, and to be able to see three, you might say, regular guys actually take it apart and make something of it, maybe people would think, gee, maybe I could get a car and uh, an old something and, and do it myself. It's doable. I think anybody who's interested in old cars, particularly English cars, will find this entertaining because because there's always a story connected to every part of them when you go through them. I'm sure it could be a beautiful car once it's done, like the day it rolled off the showroom floor. It's a bit of a phoenix, you know, disaster, redemption, and then uh, the car hopefully will then look as good as the uh, blue one in the background. I think it'll be a lot of fun to rebuild this car. It'll be hard work, but at the same time, it'll be a lot of fun.